Okay, so here's my problem with what pastors and preachers do with Paul. It's, it's boring. So they stand up and they get a little paragraph of text and it's filled with technical terms like justification, sanctification, election, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's really a little dry. It's abstract. What they need to do is combine Paul's theology with his life, which was incredibly dramatic. I mean, this guy was in prison, he was flogged, he was fleeing cities, he was showing up and converting no names and low lives, the Holy Spirit was striking people blind through him. I mean, he's a racy guy. There's a lot of drama. Um, and the letters are actually emerging out of all this drama. And so what I would really like to see pastors doing is putting these texts in the middle of the drama so there are other people in the room. So you're hearing Paul engaging with other early Christian leaders who are not getting the gospel quite right. And there's a really vigorous to and fro going on here. Uh, but it's exciting stuff and it's real. And it's also very practical. This guy was a practical theologian. He wasn't just a systematic theologian. He was systematic, but he was practical. And so Paul has all this advice about how you can actually plant churches, which is something we need to relearn, and then nurture them. He's, he's got tons of practical advice. When you put it in a story, Paul the missionary, Paul the defender of the gospel against false teachers, all of a sudden it all kind of comes to life. So that, yeah, I've devoted a fair bit of my research agenda to articulating Paul's story and then writing books um, that help people to put the theology into the story, because even scholars are not very good at that. They, they tend to be thought guys or they tend to be life people. And marrying the two together is actually quite tricky. Um, I hope I've got that right. I've certainly given it a lot of thought. <laughs> <laughs>